Thank you for watching this video so that way you can learn everything you need to know about appearing at court for a felony court appearance at the Maricopa County Superior Court. My name is Zach Divelbis. I'm one of the defense attorneys. We also have Ed Robinson as our other defense attorney. One of us will be appearing at court with you. And here's what you should know as early as possible in your case is what is going to happen when you go to court, what you should know ahead of time and what you're going to be dressing as, what the address is going to look like, what you're supposed to be looking for what it means to wait there and I'm gonna go over that now so no for felony court appearances this is the serious cases this is one of the highest courts that we have in Arizona it handles only felonies so we're not talking about little baby DUIs speeding tickets we're not talking about Mesa Court Scottsdale you know Arcadia nothing like that we're talking about Phoenix felony Superior Court called Maricopa County Superior Court. This is really what everyone should know about this. Again, these are the top level judges. They get elected, they get appointed, there are commissioners. So it is the end all be all. This is the top that most people should ever have to experience here in the criminal justice court process. What you should know is that you are going to be required in a felony court appearance to appear every single time, okay? And every single time with a tiny little asterisk. There are some court appearances that sometimes happen in court or in your case where the judge will might, might cancel it or say that nobody has to appear. But when in doubt, plan on appearing in person for your court appearance unless we tell you otherwise or unless, of course, the judge tells you otherwise. Just know that's commonly a classic mix up that a lot of people have is they say, oh, I don't I didn't think I had to appear for court because it was just going to be a quick five minute hearing. Guess what you do? We as your lawyers would love to represent you without you being there, but the judges really require it again 99 times out of 100. Now I will also let you know that most of the times, especially early on in your case, these are five minute hearings, super quick, super simple. They're really meant for the lawyer, the prosecutor, and the judge to basically three way converse where all that they're really gonna ask of you is your name and date of birth. We're sorry that you have to go through this inconvenience ahead of time. We know going to court is not an easy thing. You're a working class person. You probably sent your children to daycare and it's expensive and this is a whole inconvenience for you and we're sorry that it only took five minutes there in court. You might be waiting for an hour beforehand. Parking could be expensive, so just know we apologize ahead of time, but this is one of those things that is out of our control in felony cases. So what you wanna be thinking about before you show up to court, okay? Just know in the beginning stages of these court appearances, there's not gonna to be too much of an update that comes from us, the law firm, okay? As we get deeper into your case, as we start going through evidence, as we start getting plea deals, as we start needing settlement conferences, if we need evidentiary hearings, if we're you know weeks, months deep into a case, then we will typically prepare you with a separate video than this that is custom for you, explaining exactly what's in a plea deal, explaining exactly what's in our police report that we have, explaining what it means to go from a fast track court up to the trial court level. We go through and explain your specific case in a much more custom format. This is just the general, okay? Understand though, preparing for these court dates are important. So you need to think first days before your court appearance is even there, what are you gonna wear, okay? This is again, the top notch of our court. So you do need to dress professional, okay? We basically say for both men and women, think business casual, okay? For men, you wanna be thinking something along the lines of a wedding. If you're invited to a wedding, you will typically wear a long sleeve, similar to what I'm wearing, full button downs, slacks, nice shoes, and a belt. We believe that that is appropriate, okay? We as the lawyers, we're always gonna dress in a full suit, tie, and jacket. You, on the other hand, as a male, typically do not need the tie and you typically do not need the jacket. However, if you do want to wear it, please do so. The reason why is because we're trying to set you apart from everyone else there at court. So if you look better than everyone else, even better for you. The prosecutor's running the show. The prosecutor's running the charges against you. And if they're looking at you and they're looking at your charges and they're going, wow, this doesn't match up. You know, this guy's, you know, dressed to the T. These charges can't be right. That's better, that's what we want them to think. If you have to wear the same suit, the same outfit every time, that's okay too. Again, it's not meant to be a fashion show, wear the same thing every single time if you have to. Okay, again, for ladies, we're thinking here, business casual, whatever you would think is business appropriate. You might also be thinking of terms of, of, this, of a fancier wedding or what you would wear to church as your Sunday's best, okay? 
We want you to be comfortable. Understand we don't want you to be so comfortable though that you're wearing your athletic gear. We all love Lulu, but Lulu does not belong in the courtroom. Now the general rule of thumb when it comes to ladies, I did not make these rules, they may not be PC, is this. Cover as much skin as possible. The general rule here, shoulders need to be covered, cleavage needs to be covered, legs need to be covered, and it's best to wear low profile shoes, flats. Please don't wear heels. Again, we don't want you to be uncomfortable. Most people uh, can you know, go without a sweater, so you don't need a sweater, sweats, or anything along those lines. Bring a purse that is of reasonable size. You don't need a giant bag full of a ton of different things here. So as far as that goes, again, we're trying to impress the prosecutor with how you look, trying to set you apart as somebody who's taking this seriously. Everyone should have their hair done, their facial features cleaned. Please, if you for whatever reason don't have that, then here's what the next best thing is for our men. For our men, look, at least then wear jeans, wear a belt, clean your shoes, and at least wear a shirt with a collar with just three buttons there. Again, ladies, do what you can do then next that is casual but yet still professional so that way you set apart a good appearance when it comes to you appearing for your case. Again, you might only be there for five minutes. Just because you dress nice doesn't mean you get out of your case. But I will tell you this, we have seen people dress really bad. They've got rips in their jeans. They're wearing, you know, their shirt that they were painting in for three days. They show up, their hair's all crazy. The judges will look down on that and say, if you're not taking this serious, how am I supposed to trust that you're gonna be rehabilitated in the future? And I've seen them give harsher punishments, okay? So again, this is kind of like a double-edged sword. It doesn't necessarily help you, but it's gonna protect you in the future if you dress nice. So think about that ahead of time. Please don't struggle the morning of to try and get that done. The next thing I want you to be aware of is travel, okay? Travel, travel, travel. You need to think about this because you are going to downtown Phoenix, okay? These court appearances are typically starting at 8.30 in the morning, which means you are going to be dealing with traffic. Everyone coming from the west side, the east side, the north side is all heading to downtown Phoenix. So this is my recommendation. If you have court on a Wednesday, please on a Monday or Tuesday at 7.30 in the morning, go and punch in the address of the court into your maps on your phone so that way you can gauge how much traffic is there in our rush hour, okay? It's very important you do this because we have a ton of clients who think that they can make it to downtown in 15 minutes and they thought that because they Googled it at, you know, 2 p.m. and there was no traffic. Again, if there's traffic, you need to plan for that because it is your responsibility to be there at court. We as the lawyers can only make so many excuses for our clients for not being there. Your responsibility is to be there. I'm gonna get a little deeper into parking here in a bit where I'll show you kind of the best places to park and I'll show you what these courthouses look like from a street view. Some of the next things to think about is the court start time. I was typically mentioning most court appearances start at 8.30, okay? The judge is scheduling everyone. The judge is gonna schedule 50 to 100 people all at 8.30. Know that 8.30 is typically not the time that you actually go into the courtroom to talk to the judge, but 8.30 is when you're required to be there, okay? Understand this is a requirement for you. We as the lawyers will sometimes be late because we're at a different court, we're dealing with another case, we're talking to a prosecutor, we're across the street at a different court, we're in the judges community, we're doing a bunch of different other things. Your responsibility is to be there at 830, okay? And of course, we'll be in communication with you ahead of time. We'll send texts to each of our clients with the address, with the time to be there. We'll let you know if we as the lawyers can anticipate that we will be late or you know, res rescheduling uh, who's going to be in what order. Sometimes we have two clients at the same place, two clients at different courtrooms. There are two courthouses that are right next to each other. So there's a lot of things that come up in the air. Again, it's your responsibility to sit there and wait patiently. One of the things that goes with this is these buildings are big, they're air conditioned. Please don't wait outside, don't wait in your car. Go into the court building, go through security. Please, when you go through security, do not bring any guns, knives, pepper spray, you know, pocket knives. They will make you throw it all away. You will never get it back and it's not a good look. Please don't be late because you brought something like that and have to go back to your car. Then, you will always usually get a floor that you need to appear at. Second floor, third floor, 10th floor. It is okay at that point to then go and wait on that floor, okay? You do not need to go into the courtroom on that floor, but on each floor there is waiting areas, there are benches. That is the appropriate place for you to wait for us, your lawyer, to get there, okay? 
Ed and myself, we know what you look like. We have your ID from your driver's license. We've seen you in body cam. You, of course, should know what we look like. If you don't, please go to our website. You'll see in our bio page what we look like. Okay, we're always going to be there at the appropriate time for us to be there. Your responsibility is to be there as well, as well in a place where we can find you. Okay, again, we're not going to spend a bunch of time texting and calling the morning up because we got a ton of different things on our plate. Courts are very stressful for you. They're stressful for us. So again, we're trying to make this as easy as possible on you here ahead of time. Now, one of the things people ask us is, can I go and wait in the courtroom? Yes, that is allowed. Sometimes it's beneficial because you can sit there and hear what other people are saying, what other lawyers are saying, what other cases are like, but just know it is also okay to sit outside of the courtroom. Just know, don't go hiding in a courtroom so that way we gotta pop our head in and say, Michael, you know, Susie, where are you at? Because then that sometimes can, you know, look embarrassing for you. We want it to be professional. So when you're supposed to be at a place, please be there for us. Okay. Other things to think about here are if you have a court appearance and you get to that floor and you notice there's a bunch of people in a line, what they are doing is they are checking in. Okay, This is most common in South Court Tower on the second and third floor. There is a desk right in the middle of, a, of a four different courtrooms. There's a desk in the middle. People line up because you do need to check in there. Okay, You check in without your lawyers. You walk in. You tell them your name, your date of birth. They check you. They mark you as present. That is important because the courts really with all these people can go all morning and even into the afternoon. And if the judge thinks that you didn't check in, that's not a good look on you. Technically, that's why you're supposed to be there at 8.30, so you can go away in that line and check in. Now, if you have a court appearance on the fourth through the 50th floor, well, there's no check-in for you, so that's fine. You just wait outside of the courtroom. Okay. One of the things to be aware of is if you are waiting outside of the courtroom, yes, you're always allowed to be on your phone. That is perfectly fine. If you go into the courtroom, the golden rule is not to be on your phone, okay? Please understand, even if the judge is not there, the judge's bailiff and the clerks, they're sitting in there usually and they're taking note of people who are not paying attention, people who are falling asleep, people who are on their phones, and they will tell the judge they are snitches. It happens, okay? Your responsibility when you're in the courtroom, whether the judge is there or not, is to be professional, sit there quietly, and just stare at the front. Another little rule that most people are unaware of is whenever the judge enters the courtroom, everyone is supposed to stand, and then the judge will tell everyone to sit down. So just know that, try and remember that if that happens. Some situations the judge doesn't make everyone stand anyways. Okay. When you come to court, please plan on bringing all of your court paperwork. If for whatever reason you have police reports, you have fingerprints that you've completed, you have counselings that you've done, you have letters of support, you have any kind of proof or evidence you have sent us before, please bring it because it's always helpful to have an extra copy. Again, we as the law firm owners and the, fir and the attorneys, we will also be bringing what we have, but it's always best if you bring an extra copy just in case. Okay. Now, this is a question we get asked a lot as well. These are big deals. This is your case and it's very important. Now, should you bring a bunch of your family with you? The general rule of thumb is no. Are they allowed at the courthouse? Yes, technically they are. It is a public building. The public is allowed to enter, okay? But again, it's not meant to be a distraction for you. You are our client. You have hired us to help you. You did not hire us to explain what's going on to four, five, 17 different people, okay? We're there to help you in the most fast, efficient way possible to get you the best result possible, which typically does not mean even having you try and orchestrate where every single one of your family members parks, where they sit, what they wear. That's a lot of work for you. You are stressed enough about your case itself. We do say, however, if you want to bring a significant other, a spouse, you know, a parent, that is very important to you if that means something to you, okay? Bring one or two please don't bring a whole family, okay? It is also very important that you do not bring anyone under the age of 18. While yes, they're allowed in the building, they will not be allowed into the courtroom, okay? So just know that children are, anyone under 18 is not allowed in the actual courtroom. They can't watch you or see the judge or anything like that. It is also inappropriate for you to bring your young kids and say, Yes, kid, you sit by yourself in, you know, the seats outside the courtroom while you're in the courtroom for an hour. That is not allowed either. We've seen people try and do that. Please don't make that mistake. You must get childcare and plan for the whole morning, okay? This is very important. 
Court appearances sometimes, because there's so many people, we as, we as lawyers are usually able to skip the line, but there are so many lawyers that it ends up taking hours before your turn gets called. So just know that we try and make this as smooth and as fast as possible. Sometimes we're in and out in 20 minutes. Sometimes it's gonna take two or three hours. Again, we don't know, things change every day. This leads me to really one of the most important things. We tell you ahead of time to plan on and appear for court. Sometimes the judge, the judge is the master of the court appearance. They will cancel and reschedule court appearances without telling anyone the day before, the night before, the morning of. Okay, so we deeply apologize for any inconvenience. Now, if we send you a last minute text saying, hey, super sorry, your courtroom changed or the whole thing got canceled or come back in a week, that's usually the judge who's doing that. That's not us trying to inconvenience you in any way. So again, that's why it's very important for you to read our text messages, know exactly the address that we're putting in there, know the time that we're putting in there, save it, put it on your calendar, plan to have childcare that whole day, or at least that whole you know, four hour segment of the morning or the afternoon. And when we get to parking, please plan on parking for more than an hour. It usually takes more than an hour for us to get through all of this. Okay. Again, when you actually appear in the court, sometimes it's just gonna be your name and date of birth is all you're saying. Again, I know this can be stressful, but just know if you only say your name and date of birth, that is perfectly fine and okay. It's a status conference for us, the lawyers, to tell the judge where we're at in your case and what is going on there. Okay, the next thing that I wanna mention here, again, is super important. We want to say this here out front. It is okay that you are there at court waiting without us, okay? Please don't go into the courtroom and start talking to the judge without us though, okay? That is never okay. If the judge calls you in, you say, judge, I'm waiting for my lawyer. Again, we as lawyers have never missed a court appearance. We will always be there. The judges are aware that every judge schedules everyone at 830. So the judges are, are okay with us, the lawyers, going to different courtrooms or courthouses all at the same time to handle sometimes more important things first, okay? We internally, our paralegals, contact the judge's assistants days before to let them know that we as the attorneys will be late. And again, we usually let you know as well that you may be you know, there at 8.30, but we as the attorney may not be there till 9.30 or 10. Of course, we wanna be there exactly on time and early, but there are situations where judges require us to be in other places. So again, it's very important Please don't talk to judges without your lawyer and just know that we will be there and we will let you know ahead of time when to appear. Okay, next thing I wanna talk about here is the actual court locations when it comes to appearing at these superior courts for felony cases. So what we have pulled up here, this is a general you know, layout and I know it's likely gonna be hard to see on your phones and computers, so I'll zoom in on a few different things. This right here is South Court Tower. It says it right here. South Court Tower, it says the address is 101 West Madison. I'm sure if you Google that, it'll take you to the same place. You'll see it on your paperwork as 175 West Madison. This is the same place. Maricopa County Superior Court is called South Court Tower. And then you will also notice that there's one called Central Court Building. <laughs> These are the two different places and they are connected by a bridge right here. This one has the different address of 201 West Jefferson. So real quickly to show you, this is what Central Court building looks like. This is 201 West Jefferson. It's a tall tan building. The doors, the entranceways are right here where security is. Okay, the next one here that I was mentioning is South Court Tower. This is a slightly nicer building. It's got glass windows, big, you know, stadium entryway with stairs, and then there are doors over here with walkways. Okay, this is what the two courthouses look like here in downtown Phoenix for you. Okay, I want you to be aware that there is minimal parking near these two courthouses. Number one, this is not a road. This is a walkway. You're only allowed to walk here. You'll notice that there's pretty much no parking right here or right here where the two entry spots are. There is parking garages, one right next to it, one across the street over here that you can go in and pay for. You basically go in, you punch the button, he spits you out a card, you pay when you leave, okay? However, there is free parking, okay? And I wanna show you that now. There is free parking. It is a little distance away. 
just here to the west, you will see that there is this open parking area. There is not an address for this or else we would give this address to everyone. We are not trying to keep this a secret. It is free parking. I want you to also be aware that if you do park here, it takes an extra five or 10 minutes to walk to court. So now I'll show you a closer view of what this looks like. There is a black fence around this. That's where a lot of people think that this is not public, but right here it says it's public. This little sign right here says that it's only open for two hour limit. Just know you can be there really all day. Please don't leave your car there overnight because they will lock these and eventually tow your car. Now, this is facing east towards these courthouses. You will see right here, these are the two court buildings that we were discussing earlier. This is kind of a long walk over here to get to these courthouses, okay? This is 4th Avenue Jail right here. If that is a landmark that is easy to remember, you will have to walk past 4th Avenue Jail and eventually you will get over here. This is the prosecutor's office, which used to be an old jail that they've converted into an office. This is Central Court Building and over here is South Court Tower. You can walk through here Whoops, I don't know where it just shot me. Oh, it moved us backwards. Well, just kidding. Uh, for the sake of that, you basically walk from there and you can enter either one of the court buildings. Again, both of these court buildings are connected. So if for whatever reason you enter the wrong court building and they say, hey, sorry, you need to go to the other building, just know that they will also tell you that you can walk across this bridge. It's on like the second or third floor. They'll tell you that and then you go to the other side of the building. Okay, that is pretty much everything that you need to know about appearing for court here. The only other thing I'll say is the light rail is new that has a lot of construction. There's ways to get to the light rail station. It's a drop off right here. If you have friends or family picking you up, again, please uh, let them know that court could take a long time. They need to drop you off early. You need to plan for extra time if you park far away. You need to plan for extra time if there is traffic. Plan for extra time if there's a long line to get in through security. Plan for extra time if there's a long line to check in once you get to that second or third floor. There are a ton of metered parking spots around here. Yes, you can use the metered parking spots. You can pay with quarters. You can even pay with a credit or debit card. However, you are not allowed to pay for one hour. This is our rule, our law firm rule. You're not allowed to pay for an hour and think that your court will be done. And then you come and you tell us, hey, Zach, hey, Ed, I've got to go back down and feed the meter. We do not like that. We would rather you get a ticket than you miss your turn in line because the judge will get upset. Okay, a $100 ticket is going to be better than making the judge upset. So please just don't even make that mistake. Park in a parking garage or park in that free parking that we talked about or have a family member that you're with go and feed your meter if that's what you're going to do. Okay. We always say to plan for that you to be there at four hours for your each court appearance at the felony level. We've really never had anybody go longer than two hours and the fastest that's ever happened was like 30 minutes, okay? So anyways, please dress nice, please plan for traffic, please know where to go, please double check your text messages for anything that we're requiring you to do, such as court appearances or court appearances changing. Again, 99 times out of 100, you do have to appear for those court appearances. Now, here at the end, I will explain that Maricopa County has allowed virtual court appearances in the past. There's another video that we go over virtual court appearances with, but I will also list it here. Virtual court appearances are a privilege, meaning the judge can take them away and force you to come in person. But if the judge does allow you to appear virtually, sometimes this is usually maybe the first or second court appearance in your case then this is what the judge requires. The judge is gonna require that you have a cell phone or a computer. Both the audio and the visual must work in this because the judge has to be able to hear you and they have to be able to see you. It is not enough that you call and you're just on a telephone line. The judge has to be visible to see you. What does that then mean? That means you need to have a very good internet connection and you must be in a quiet place, okay? You cannot have kids running around you. You cannot have other people that you're around. This is not appropriate place for you to be at Starbucks 
for a virtual court appearance. If you want to sit in a bedroom and kick everyone out, that is more appropriate. If you want to sit in a parked car, you cannot be a passenger in a moving vehicle, and especially you can't be driving in this. But if you want to sit in a parked car, that is okay because it is silent around you, okay? When you go and you sign into these things, it will usually allow you to put your name. Please put your full legal name. If you're using someone else's phone or computer, please double check that their name does not appear and your name appears instead. When you log in, it will typically automatically unmute you and turn your camera on. Please know that at the very beginning, you will need to mute yourself, okay? Nobody wants to hear anything that's going around in your background. There's all kinds of people that are joining virtually if the judge allows it, so there's a ton of back um, communication. So the judge basically is gonna mute anyone anyways. Now eventually the judge or the judge's assistant will call your name. We as the lawyers will also be presented there virtually or sometimes in person or vice versa. We will come on, you will then unmute, you will turn your video on, and then the court appearance will proceed. Again, you'll pretty much just say your name and your date of birth. And then you will basically just leave yourself unmuted for the duration in case we ask you anything. Please again, don't try and do this on a lunch break because sometimes you might be called first, sometimes you might be called last. So we can't really predict when you get called. Eventually the virtual court appearance will finish, which point we will tell you that you are free to disconnect, close your phone, turn your camera off, unmute yourself, and then go back to your day. We at the firm will sometimes give you a call or text afterwards to debrief what happened just as we normally would in person. So that's the virtual court appearance. If you get that privilege to do that, please follow this directions correctly because if you don't, the judge again could be really mad at you and make you appear in person, which is not a good thing for that. Please let us know if you have any questions about anything that we went over. I know this is a long 25 minute video, but the more information you have now about what's going to happen when you appear at court, the better, and this is the basics. For every single one of our criminal cases, again, when we get deeper into your case, we create a custom video where we explain what's going on in the police report. We explain what's going on in plea deals. If you want to accept a plea deal, we tell you each thing that you need to say and each thing that the judge is going to say to you as well. Know that you do not need to stress about this aspect of your case. We've handled hundreds, if not thousands of cases. We go to court every single day. Everything will go smooth as long as you follow the instructions that I laid out in this video. For whatever reason, if you have special accommodations or something that I did not mention here, please feel free to let us know ahead of time. That way we can answer your questions. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day.